Frank Abagnale was born on April 27, 1948, in Bronxville, New York, to parents Paulette Abagnale and Frank Abagnale Sr. When his mother decided to leave his father, Abagnale Jr.'s life was turned upside down, and Abagnale started to get caught up in small crimes, including shoplifting. However, he soon grew tired of these practices and decided to move on to more sophisticated crimes. Abagnale's first con came at the age of 15 when his father gave him a gasoline credit card and a truck to assist him in commuting to his part-time job. To get date money, Abagnale devised a scheme in which he used the gasoline card to buy car-related items at gas stations and then ask the attendants to give him cash refunds for the products. Eventually, his father was hit with a $3,400 bill, forcing him to stop. Abagnale then turned to bank fraud, writing personal checks on his overdrawn account and eventually creating new identities to sustain the charade. Over time and through experimentation, he would develop different ways to defraud banks. At the age of 16, Abagnale decided to impersonate a pilot to look more legitimate when cashing checks. He obtained a uniform by calling Pan Am and telling the company that he was a pilot who had lost his uniform while getting it cleaned at his hotel. He then forged a pilot's license. Pan Am estimates that between the ages of 16 and 18, Abagnale flew around 250 flights to 26 countries. As a company pilot, he was able to stay at hotels for free as expenses such as food or accommodation were billed to the airline company. Abagnale stated that he was often invited by pilots to take control of the plane in flight. On one occasion, he was offered the courtesy of flying at 30,000 feet. He took the controls but enabled the autopilot. It almost came to an end when Abagnale was almost arrested as he disembarked a flight from New Orleans. Afraid of capture, Abagnale decided to lay low in Georgia. When filling out a rental application, he impulsively listed his occupation as doctor. After befriending a real doctor who lived in the same apartment complex, he agreed to act as a supervisor of resident interns as a favor until the local hospital could find someone else to take the job. For 11 months, Abagnale impersonated a chief resident pediatrician. He left the hospital only after he realized he could be putting lives at risk. Next, he told a flight attendant he had briefly dated that he was also a Harvard Law student and she introduced him to a lawyer friend. Abagnale was told the bar needed more lawyers and was offered a chance to apply. After making a fake transcript from Harvard, he prepared himself for the compulsory exam. Despite failing twice, he passed the bar exam legitimately on the third try after eight weeks of study, because Louisiana at the time allowed you to take the bar over and over as many times as you needed. It was really a matter of eliminating what you got wrong. He spent a total of eight months as a fake attorney. Abagnale was eventually arrested in France in 1969 when an Air France attendant he had previously dated recognized him and informed police. Without valid passport, the authorities deported him to the United States, where he was sentenced to 12 years in a federal prison for multiple counts of forgery mounting to an estimated $2.5 million. While being deported to the United States, Abagnale escaped from the plane as it was turning onto a taxiway at New York's JFK airport. Under the cover of night, he climbed a nearby fence and hailed a cab. After stopping in the Bronx, Abagnale caught a train to Montreal's Dorval Airport to purchase a ticket to Brazil. At the airport, he was apprehended by police while standing in line at the ticket counter. In April 1971, Abagnale once again escaped custody by posing as an undercover inspector while awaiting trial, but was rearrested a few weeks later. After serving less than five years in prison, Abagnale was released on parole in 1974 on the condition that he advised the FBI on fraud prevention, something he still does to this day, teaching at the FBI Academy and lecturing for FBI field offices throughout the country.